Hello everyone, I'm Debbie Polachek. I am the Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. Today I'm going to take the bull by the horns is what I'm going to call this video. And what, I, I, what I'm going to do is start by nitpicking these four cards that I did. Now, what I do like about these... Uh, okay, I'm going to start off with the flowers. I showed you a technique within the video which was it's really good but I wanted to perfect it a bit for you and I don't know if you have the lasting lily stamp set that was this one that was in the catalog last year for around Easter time great stamp set but it was a real difficult stamp set to work with too it was a lot like our flower here is and um, but I have come up with another solution for it or a or, or a advanced way of doing the same solution that we had in the last video but uh, this is what we're going to do today we're going to just do the flower and I will go through and nitpick and show you some different things to make this card more like a like a painting that's my aim here I want it to make like a painting and do it the same steps you would do a painting so to show distance within the background and to show um, distance within the in the flowers themselves. Okay, so what I discovered is that if I dried my stamp off like I did in the previous, and I'll go ahead and show you how I did that. Um, it makes this stamp with a too inky pad look too too flat it doesn't have any dimension like it should have when you uh, stamp it straight okay so we want to improve that okay and and I don't have a, the lasting lily anymore to find out exactly how that works but this is what I found on this one on my particular ink pad now different colors might work out different but I tried and I, again I'll show you how to do the drying off deal but I tried it one time just stamping it one time in my stamp apparatus and this was my result which was pretty but for a picture in the foreground it was too light not enough detail okay so I wanted to get more detail so I did the same thing. I did the dry um, pad and did it two times. And I got this result. Okay, you can see you get a little bit more intense color in the shadows, but the, the highlights are starting to wash away already. But yet, it gives it a better effect on my busy background. Okay. So let me go ahead and try it a third time, see what happens. And this is the results I got of it. Again, here we started losing all uh, the highlighted areas. So, but yet you had more, and it was more like it was supposed to be than just by trying to hit it one time with too juicy of a pad. Okay. But again, I did like the color on this busy background. So, the next thing I tried, well, uh, let's do it two times so I can keep my detail, but I'm going to go ahead and put Versamark on it and put some clear embossing, which will darken it, and see what I come up with. And I did. And it came up, it's shiny during tint, but to me, in a foreground, not a biggie. Being glossy, it's the, sh it's the center of interest the whole thing is centered around these flowers. So it should be the most brightest, shiniest, whatever, part of your card. Okay. And I also did it with some, come back, did it two times, and then put some Wink of Stella in the highlighted areas. And it's, it's a nice shimmer pretty result too. So if you want something softer, that might be something instead of the embossing, that might be something you might want to use. 
to do it on both of them. So anyway, since I think that this is the best on this card with this background, I'm going to do the same thing again. But I am going to only do it one time, the, uh, the stamping one time, with a dry, with a brand new stamp pad that just came out this last year. Which I have had that are probably, since I've been in Stampin' Up, that are like seven or eight years old. And they they still, they're, well actually they're just now starting to be need, need to be re-inked. So that's a long time, okay? So that's saying our stamps come pretty juicy. Plus, they still are stored in an up-down position. So that makes the top of the pad, again, juicy, which is great. For normal stamping, but for this, it's not so great. So this time I got it lined up. Let's see if I got it lined up right. Yeah, it's good enough, I think. I'll move it over just a bit. Okay. Now this is a thick, a thick um, stamp. One of those thicker ones. It's not the polymer. But I see, as you can see, I still have my pad here. And I love this paper here because this paper is going to come in handy in just a minute when I do my embossing. Okay, now here we go again. I'm going to take my card, covered up my information this time, and take my credit card and just go across it like this and like this two or three times, especially if it's the first time you've done this on this stamp bed. Now I've just done it recently, so it's probably not that the ink has not oozed back up to the top as bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now since I did this two times, I'm going to only do this one one time. Because I still want the shiny results, but I want a lighter version of the same. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to take my, cover up my work here. Put a little cleaner there. Now you can go ahead and powder if you like. Not that the clear gives you much trouble because you don't see it where it goes. But it's a good habit to be in. Go ahead and put my Versa mark here. Stamp it again. Now where it is where my paper is going to come in handy. I've got my clear embossing. It's just about gone. Go ahead and move my magnets aside. this in my mention this in many videos but I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to this little contraction here it does a real good job of getting rid of the rest of the embossing powder that you might got anywhere great little tool to have at your desk okay so now I've got it all done and ready to heat emboss it put that out Let's compare this with the first one that's only got one time. Yeah, see it's a little bit brighter. And do you see more of the details? Yes, you see more of the details in this one than you do this one. But still, it's on this busy background, that's still a little bit of light as far as I'm concerned. Now, I do want it a little bit lighter for this flower that's in the back than, than the ones in the front. So therefore, it works pretty good pictures the before and after on this video and like I said stay tuned we're going to go more into this and nitpick it till we get it just right okay after I took my photos that you just saw I'm still not perfectly happy with this I decided that both of them are really close together on the same level 
So I would like to have both of them to be just like this. Again, to, to brighten up this busy background. Now, if I had a softer background, I might wanted to do it just one time. You might just wanted to do it this way. This way, you know, or any of these ways that we talked about. I don't know if I'd ever pick it the third way. Because it's just too drowned out. Stamp it twice. Same spot. With the dried off. What I'm calling dried off is the credit card cleaning it. Um, ink pad. There we go. This will be in fast motion so you don't have to be bored with this. Main thing is so for, I want you to see the final pictures in the back of the video. Okay, at the end of the video, you'll see the picture of this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and stay tuned for more. Bye-bye.